gentlemen and welcome to the School of Science. My name is Luke and this is the Everton Stadium update for the 13th of April 2024. Now as we go over the site today I just want to make one thing very quick. Well I want to say something very quick. I do apologize for the videos being like two weeks instead of weekly. Unfortunately weather's just not really been playing in our hands and as we know with this being a coastal stadium we are at the whims of the weather, so rain, sleet, snow, winds, those sorts of things will stop us from getting anywhere near the site. So unfortunately, these are some of the terms I've got to deal with when I'm trying to deal with all this. But I digress, as we, we're going to go across the stadium now and enjoy what we can see. So yeah, looking across the east end right now, there isn't too much going on. From what I've been told though... The black facade that you've got that's going to go in between the bricks, that is not far from being done over here. So we will pretty much have this all closed off, as well as little bits that need to be done inside. Well, I say inside, at the very base as well. Right now, it's mostly just cleaning stuff out as well as getting certain equipment out before they finish all that off. And it's, it's, it's moving along. It is moving along the way it should be. But yeah, as we go across though on the fan plaza, we can see that the second stage is still in progress. So what they've pretty much mentioned on the thing is, so the first phase was white literally from the wall itself to pretty much on level with the hydraulic tower to an extent and then it comes in. And then from there, it's a matter of going into phase two. So they're doing groundwork for phase two, getting everything ready. The only thing we've got to bear in mind is before phase two, as well as finishing off phase one, we need to pretty much get all the heavy machinery out of the ground just for the fact that whilst that's there, it's going to be very difficult for them to get it in as well as maintaining it because those blocks themselves, although they're very thick and durable looking, chances are when a two, three or even four ton machine goes over them, it could potentially chip or crack them. And the last thing we need is chipped and cracked blocks when we go into our new site. It's, it's not something that we want to see. Likewise with the Everton, um, the Everton plaques that are going to be going across the South Stand. So I've been given good information on that one. It's on my Twitter. So someone on Twitter actually mentioned to me and gave me a photo as well. So at the moment, they're all pretty much, the most of them, if not all of them, are already made and ready to go. It's just a simple matter of getting them onto the site and getting them installed. So again, groundworks is going to be the main thing that we're going to be talking about when it comes to those sorts of things. They need to work on the ground before they can do anything. Speaking of which, when we go very quickly... <laughs> sorry, I'm going off track here. So inside the actual bowl of the stadium, so you'll see this when we're looking down, they are starting the groundworks on the pitch itself. So what they've made clear on Everton's video is this pitch itself, very similar to Goodison, is going to be kind of like a hybrid pitch. So you're going to have natural grass. That's going to make up probably about 80 to 90% of what it is. And then from there, there's going to be nylon fibers that are going to actually be stitched into the ground itself. Now, this is done by a machine, and it takes absolutely ages for that machine to do it. It's a very expensive machine as well. When I was in New Zealand, I worked for a company that did water blasting inside the Canter... Well, I called, back then it was called the AMI Stadium. And we used to clean the seats before the season kicked off. And they had one of these machines inside there. I was speaking to one of the fellows, and back then... It's one of about a, a couple of dozen, and they are about 10 million pounds a pop. The thing itself is massive, and they, it probably takes up about a quarter of the pitch, in a sense, quarter of the width of the pitch, and it's very, very narrow in terms of actual, you know, lengthways. But the thing itself, what happens is it basically pushes fiber in and stitches it under the ground for it to all stick together the reason they do this is solely for the fact that when you are running across this turf anywhere between a week to two, once to twice or even three times a week it gets cut up quite badly if you've ever played on a standard pitch out in the parks like Walton Hall Park, Sefton Park or anywhere like that you'll know for a fact that these pitches get shredded so quickly and it takes a while for them to actually be properly fixed up and playable again. 
So having these fibers in are very important for the pitch to actually be maintained. Now bear in mind, all this sort of stuff is going to be taking place between now and August. So between now and August, what's going to happen is a lot of the groundworks are going to get done. If you've got a bingo card, there's groundworks again. Um, on top of that, there is also a lot of stuff in regards to, you know, irrigation, the undersoil heating. A uh, very quick fact for you, Everton were the very first team to actually have undersoil heating in their stadium. They were also the first purpose-built stadium solely for football. But yeah, they're going to have stuff like that put into it alongside all the electrics as well as connection ports for the advertisement boards. So all these sorts of things are going to be going in before we even think about flattening the grass, well, flattening the dirt and everything and getting the seeds planted as well as all the fibre and everything injected. Apparently, though, that will be around August when that happens. But for the time being, what we will be doing, so pretty much what we'll do is the first video in May, from there on in, I'm going to be doing a extra little piece, and it's going to be the last, well, it'll actually be before we, it'll basically go from West Stand to North Stand. In between there, we're going to do a little pan around, in, well, around the bowl of the stadium itself. So we're going to try and get up at the maximum height that we're legally allowed to. We're going to optimize the digital zoom on the camera. And we're going to do a nice little circle around and look down into there and see the progress from that. So that will probably be like another minute. I'll make sure of that. And it's one that we're going to try and utilize a little bit more because it is something I want to try and do. Now, this is one thing I've got to mention. Um, well, actually, before that, I'm going to mention the West End. So right now, it is brilliant to see all the stairs and everything. I've kind of went a little bit of a tangent here. And I wasn't even looking at the video for a couple of seconds. But yeah. So we can see the barrel cladding is actually going in place as well. So there's actually a good little bit of progress on that. I think they've, bloody hell, they've actually already pretty much done it to the maximum extent at this point. So the barrel cladding looks like it's kind of went on a pause for the time being. But I'm really happy with that progress. It's something that we can actually look at and kind of focus on. As you can see, the seagulls were actually getting kind of angry around there as well. But yeah, as well on top of that, the west stand. So the stairs and everything are looking rather nice as well. But yeah. As we go across the North Stand right now, can't see too much from here. Most of the stuff that's going on right now is block work as well as inside the stadium itself. But yeah, talking about the pitch very quickly as well. I, actually, if you look at the very bottom there, you can actually see the seats as well. It's nice. I'm, cu I'm curious actually. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's actually uh, mentioned this one. Why are the why are these the glass panels actually like completely transparent? I would have thought with this sort of thing for the effect of the stadium, they could add like a mirror effect to them. Um, what, if anyone is able to inform me on this one, I mean, I, this is a completely random thing to be talking about. But it's something that's just sort of come to mind at the moment. I would have thought with this, they could have probably have benefited of putting it as like a, a, a what's the name? Like a mirror effect on this one. Because I think that would be very nice in terms of reflectiveness. Also on top of that, it kind of stops people from looking from outside in. Also, on, on overall, I'm really excited to sort of see the stadium come along. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on outside the stadium, you know, with all the points deduction and everything like that. It's negative things that we can't really be doing with right now. But Everton overall, we're actually doing... We're, 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 we're not doing great, but we're doing okay. We, I, I've got high confidence that we're going to survive this season. And then coming into the next season, it's going to be the massive rebuild. We're going to finish off everything at Goodison Park. We'll try and do the old girl justice before we go into the new stadium. Get every all our ducks in a row. And just try and put this financial fair play headache behind us. Because it's just getting to the point now where it's becoming an absolute nightmare for us. Every single week, we're getting point deduction, point deduction, point deduction. I mean, even now, talking about this stadium right now, the threatening points deduction because we're doing the bloody stadium. Even though Tottenham have spent over a billion pounds on their stadium and they've been able to write that all off as an external thing. How they've done that, I don't know. Whilst we're getting bloody, getting our rears walloped for it. But this is one for the future. Anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Take care, peace, and up the fucking toffees.